<laughs> gotcha! I clickbaited all you guys with the title and, and the thumbnail. <laughs> the look on your face! <laughs> no, I, I'm, I'm kidding. No, no, no. <laughs> Keep it tuned in. It's a new series that I'm introducing. Let me get to it. Did you ever think to yourself sometimes what a creative director was kind of thinking when they release a really shitty flanker? You know, a terrible name, packaging doesn't even make sense. Um, even worse, the scent itself is terrible. Or they made a flanker to a scent that, in our eyes, was just horrible. Why? Why would you do that? It has nothing to do with the line. It's just terrible. Go away. <laughs> Me too. Yeah, I feel the same way. Well, welcome to my new series today, which I call Flankered. Yeah, this is where I take some of my favorite scents and do what I wish. Right up to bottle design. Let's go. <laughs> What's going on YouTube fragrance family? Thank you so much for tuning in. Hopefully you've stayed this long in the video. If you did, merci beaucoup. Let's get into the idea. Let's break this thing down before I get into the meat and potatoes of this idea. So for me personally, I'm a huge fan of flankers. Uh, sometimes, hey, they're oversaturated, you know, amen. You know, uh, sometimes we want Muglier to uh, really something else uh, away from the amen line. And at times we're, we're buying these Amen flankers like they're sold out cookies. Uh, so uh, to me, I, I am a sucker of a, a flanker done right. And what, what do I mean by that is, of course, uh, something that uh, a flanker done right is a, a fragrance that really pulls a lot from the original scent and scent wise and marketing too. Um, you don't want to go too far away or stray away from the classic scent. So um, Amen is a great uh, example of that. They've done a great, great job over there at Mugier. Um, as much as you'd love or hate that brand, um, they've done a really good job with their flankers, uh, while other companies kind of floundered with some of their flankers. Um, the thing that is really, really important to me is, uh, you know, the bottle design, uh, the name, and the scent really do need to make sense and pull a lot from the original. Uh, to me, that is, that's important for a flanker to do. You can't just slap on a name and, and call it sport. And there's a lot of that in our fragrance industry that um, they just piggyback on what's popular these days. And uh, it'll have nothing to do with the original classic. They're just piggybacking on that original name. So to me, marketing is the most important part, one of the most important parts and the first step to grab the attention of the consumer. And uh, how we lure that consumer in is, first of all, the name of the fragrance. Y you need a great name. Second, you need the bottle and the box and the ad uh, to all match up to the set. Um, there's many times that I've went I don't know, extreme or intense version of something. And, and directly in your mind, you're like, okay, it's going to be an intense version of this. And it's way, no, it's not even that. Or it's called something, something black. And you'd think it'd be a darker version of the original when it's a fresh set and you're just like marketing gone bad here. Um, so uh, to a frag head, uh, and, and that's something that interests me quite a bit. Um, and of course, as a frag head, us, uh, we always, when a new release comes out and the bottle looks great and uh, the name and it's a flanker to one that you absolutely love, you're going to go straight down to Fragrance Girl or something, a website, and go check out the note breakdown, right? Right? Um, just to see what the note breakdown looks like. Um, so I'm here to bring that idea to life. I'm going to build something from the ground up, flanker up. My Lamal bottle. So if I ever took a job in the fragrance industry, if you asked me, I'd be a creative director. Um, the reason why is they got all the power. Um, they can give you a brief and say, this is what I want. I want the bottle to look like this. I want the ad to look like this. I want this model. I want the scent to smell like this. Um, so a creative director, and that's what I'm going to be today for Lamal. So let's see if I'm going to do justice to my new series here with my favorite designer release of all time. I got it right here. And uh, 
them all. I know this fragrance like the back of my hand. I know all its flankers. <laughs> I, I, I know everything about this fragrance. So let's see if I can make a flanker of Le Mans. Now Le Mans had its fair share of flankers over the years. Oh, did it ever. Some great, some not so great, some, some snoozers out there. Um, I'm excited to construct what I feel should be the next release from Jean-Paul Gaultier in the Le Mans series. Let's get to it. So now let's take a look at the brief. Uh, the brief itself is basically that. Um, this is where the idea starts. And that's how I started this video idea. I was like, okay, Lamal, I want a flanker. And I just briefed myself. I said, what do I want? So any new creation of a fragrance always starts with that brief. The man in charge uh, needs to let everybody know at the company that they're what they're striving for. What is the idea behind this new fragrance? So we're at Jean-Paul Gaultier headquarters and here I am. And here's my brief to my crew. First and foremost, to the nose. <laughs> The nose, let's start with the juice because it's the most important part. Advertising and all that stuff is gonna go in the back end. So the juice, we're late to the party at the Oud craze. Yes, we are. It's come and gone, but I want us to make a very solid, cooler weather Le Mal with Oud in it. I want a little bit of a twist though. I want some animalic qualities to Le Mal. Since uh, we are, in the realm of a designer scent. Uh, we can't go too crazy with the an animalic tones or we're gonna lose a lot of our customers and maybe some faithful Le Mal lovers. Um, so what we can do is give Le Mal a little bit of bite, a little bit of edge, but not too crazy here. We're gonna have to keep some, we're gonna keep some of the original Le Mal. I don't wanna go completely left field here. I want some of the stronger Le Mal notes to continue in this flanker. So I want the customer to smell this fragrance and know it's still a Le Mal. Mainly, I want that mint to stay, I want the vanilla to stay, and I want that vanilla. Those require to stay in the composition. We can change them a little bit, but that's, that's the gist of it with an oud touch. Now, for packaging and ad, I'm picturing dark and luxury. Think Dubai, I want some gold in there, but also resinous and dark, I want some black in there. I want something that reminds me of an animal, Black Panther perhaps. Now let's get into my final product. First and foremost, the name. You guys already know it, it was in the title. It's called L'Animal or L'Animal. <laughs> I wanted, for the name, I wanted something to portray the dark animalic style of this flanker yet stay true to the name of Le Mal. L'animal or animal shows the dark side of the name. I picture either a cheetah, tiger, or better yet, a black panther here to go with the animal-like name. I kept the E at the end to continue with the Le Mal name. I also put Mal in capital letters to emphasize Le Mal for marketing purposes, of course. Uh, El apostrophe is something that we utilize in the French language that I wanted to utilize here to continue and embrace the French roots of Jean-Paul Gaultier and its brand. So L'Animal um, is, uh, I think, personally, especially with the animalic touch that we're going to have in this particular fragrance, I think it has a little bit of edge in the name, but it also stays true to the Le Mal namesake. Bottle design color scheme. She's right here. Let's take a look at it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna skip here and, and show you guys the bottle. You already seen it in uh, the, uh, the thumbnail, but I think any successful flanker requires to keep the same iconic bottle of a classic scent, or at least improve upon uh, that idea with minimal changes. I kept that in mind while deciding what kind of bottle I wanted. I was actually thinking of blacking out this new, the new Essence bottle. Uh, it goes with the gold top here and black this out to a, a, a black color. Um, but I finally decided on going with the classic bottle. I think the classic bottle itself um, really emphasizes what Le Mal is and change the color scheme as you can see right beside me here. I think a blacked out torso was the best way to show that it's going to be a darker Le Mal while showing. I'm not playing around. I wanted to utilize gold on the chest. Uh, showing success, money. The atomizer also required to be gold. Don't forget about that. Now to the most important part, the composition. Unfortunately for all of us today, 
we can't smell this, but I'll try to explain it after I, I give you guys the note breakdown. So in no shape or form am I a perfumier. So please keep that in mind uh, to my note breakdown. It's more of a draft, something that I would introduce to the perfumier. This is what I would want or I'd like to see in the final product. Um, so anybody that has any, <laughs> any background as being a perfumier and tells me that note breakdown is not going to work, Mark, I understand. There, there's more technical terms, of course, with the note breakdown. So first and foremost, my nose. Who is I going to pick? None other than Francis K, man. Um, Francis K uh, crafted the very first Le Mal, and sitting down with Francis K, I said, I want this to be the best Le Mal flanker that you can do. I want it dark, and uh, use your signature style that you utilize at Maison Francis K, because I want, I want that edge to it, and I want you to utilize that oud that you utilize in some of your Francis uh, K for Maison Francis. So the final idea of this composition was, um, I wanted really to emphasize mint and oud. Those are my two notes for this particular uh, brief or, or this note breakdown is those are the two notes that I really wanted. So minty oud. Oh yeah. <laughs> so the top notes of my fragrance, let's take a look at it. We got Jamaican black mint to go with the black theme. And I'll, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about the, the black mint. Uh, we got lavender and cardamom. So we don't want to pull away too much from the original Le Mal series. Um, in the heart, we have black pepper, black tea, and leather. And in the base, we have oud, vanilla, and castorium. Um, so as you can see in the note breakdown, there isn't much moving parts in this particular fragrance. And that's the way I wanted it. Uh, I didn't want it to be uh, too crazy here. A lot of these notes do have a lot of, of character to them, um, especially the oud can have castorium, um, um, of course, the black tea, the leather. Now let's start giving you guys an imagery of what my scent would smell like. Now, imagine the scent in my mind is what I wanted to do is not destroy the original Le Mal, but just rebuild it make her darker, make it stronger, make it woodier, give it some bite with that black pepper, but continue its sweetness and invigorating notes up top. I didn't want to pull away too much from the invigorating notes up top. Um, we really emphasized on a Jamaican black mint to go with the theme up top. The original Lamal is based upon mint in the opening, and I didn't want to go away from that. The Jamaican black mint is the strongest note in the opening of L'Animal, as this black mint is sharper. It's mintier than your garden variety mint. It's a mint lover's mint. I wanted something a little more authentic and Francis K can do this for me, I believe. I want a true Alpine-like feel when the user puts L'Animal on their skin on first application, that Alpine menthol-like feel in the mint in the opening to counter against all these darker notes that are coming through like an avalanche. Uh, through the opening. The mint dominates the first half hour, and since this mint is very popular, uh, utilized in actual tea, uh, we decided to throw a tea note more into the heart of the fragrance. The lavender and cardamom are both returnees to the scent, and I decided to keep them as the same quality and strength of the original. The intro is mostly mint. We got some lavender with a small pinch of cardamom. However, that oud, leathery, castorium and vanilla start taking over that opening like a dark shadow. Now more into the heart, you're gonna lose your strong mint note and you're gonna add that black pepper to give it a little more bite. Um, it's gonna give that lavender, that oud, that vanilla, that just enough bite to the fragrance, just enough to say it's there. There's a mild black tea accord in the heart and a mild smoky leather from the castorium. Now onto the star of the show is the oud. I asked Francis K to utilize his familiar oud from his Maison series, which is a cleaner oud to my nose, but it will be a great addition to the whole spectrum of the scent, giving it a woody aspect to replace the sandalwood in the original. If one man can make a highly wearable oud and give it some quality, it is my man Francis K that will do it for us. As for the castorium, you'll get some leathery aspect from it to kind of like uh, it showed itself in Mona Diorio's Cuir. So you're going to get that leathery aspect from the castorium. And of course, you can get some animalic feel to the fragrance. But at the same time, I didn't want it too skanky. And Francis K knows how to work his magic to give just enough skank to the fragrance to please the overall project, make it interesting for this nose right here. And we need to sell this thing. So uh, we don't want it 
too daring. <laughs> that would be my emphasis on L'Animal, um, which is more of a minty oud fragrance uh, with a little bit of castorium with the Lamal DNA thrown into it. A little bit of tea in there. Um, very interesting composition. Uh, if I could make it possible. So let's take a look at longevity and projection. And uh, many of you would say, hey, beast mode all the way, right? Um, no, I actually wanted this fragrance to have excellent longevity. I want 10 plus hours on my skin and projection as heavy, not beast mode, but just heavy. I want it to last on your skin, but I don't want it to blur doors off its hinges. Uh, that's not the case here. I want it to be a strong fragrance, definitely. Uh, pricing, I wanted to price this as your typical retail Jean-Paul Gaultier, maybe a little bit more because of, of course, uh, Francis K's use of the, of course, the oud and the castorium. So it may bring it up a little bit. Um, is this a mass appealing flanker? No, that's not what I was going for here. Um, I was going for the true Le Mans lovers that uh, wanted something a little darker, a little edgier, um, something with a little bite to it. And maybe Le Mans lovers like myself that are really heavy into the niche game, this would really, I feel, appeal to us. Uh, seasons, this is mostly a fall and winter fragrance packaging. I don't have a picture of it, but the tin can, we would use the tin can. The tin can would actually be black um, with gold accents to it. Concentrations eau de parfum would have to be. Uh, so that's it, guys. That is my flanker of Le Mal. So Le Mal, you just got flankered by Robes 08. Uh, so now on to you guys, the subscribers, first and foremost, because this is the introductory video on the series, I need to know. You guys like this series um, do you want more of it um, all that good stuff I'd love to hear your take if you're not interested in this it's not if it doesn't get the views and the likes I know where to put this this series but if it does I will continue to flanker up some of our favorite fragrances so a few more questions to subscribers and I hope the comment section is peppered with comments because I want to get more information from you guys first of all would you buy try or pass my new Le Mans flanker. With Castorium and Oud, it might be a pass for a lot of you guys. So I'd love to hear your take on that. And what would you do to flanker up Le Mal? You know, discontinue it? <laughs> I know some of you guys will do that. Um, but if you had a chance to do a flanker to uh, my favorite fragrance of all time, what would you do to it? Uh, you can go as much or as little detail, uh, new notes, packaging, whatever. I'd love to hear your take. And lastly, if I'm bringing this series back for a second round, what classic scent would you want me to tackle next? Anything, anything at all. You guys could put it, you want me to do an amen flanker? You guys want, to, want me to do something uh, niche, uh, designer, something that has been flankered like crazy. Um, I'd love to hear your take, what you would want me to do next. Thanks for tuning in. Have a good one.